Welcome back. And while the Intimidator, the late Dale Earnhardt, never raced here on the beach, he did win the 1998 Daytona 500. And his son, Dale Jr., followed him to Victory Lane at the World Center of Racing. What would a championship mean to you? So that's a tough question to answer. I mean, uh, people ask you what it means. What would it, you know, you go to certain racetracks, people say, what would it mean to win this race? What would it mean to end, win the Indy, Indy race or the Indy 400? And uh, what would it mean to win championships? It's, here, it's hard to put it into words, you know, really what, what it would mean. I don't know that feeling. I can't tell you this is how it's going to feel and this is what it would mean. You know, I just have to experience it, just like the Daytona 500. I, you know, I know it's a big race and it's the biggest race we run. And uh, I know, I know my dad pursued it, um, dogged after it, you know, to win that race and finally won it. And uh, I know that it sort of completed his career for him. And uh, <clears throat> I, but I didn't know really like the elation you feel inside when you win the race, what, what that moment's like right after you cross the finish line, what the next 15 minutes are like in your life. Until I did it, you know, and I had no, I, 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 I could have tried for an hour to explain to you what it would mean, what it would mean to win the Daytona 500, and never would have got close. Just the feeling, just in, insane, how excited and how relieved, you know, relief is probably the biggest feeling that I felt that day. But there was such a joy because I did it with Tony Jr. and I did it with my crew that I had, the guys individually that I, I knew them all so well. And, you know, it was just an amazing feeling. So winning a championship obviously would probably be anywhere from two to 10 times more than that. So <laughs> I don't know if my head would have probably explode at that moment. But as far as winning the Daytona 500, which like you said your dad dogged for, that had to make it a little bit more special to, to have you win it and didn't, you know, your career hasn't been as long. Yeah, as I got com more competitive in the sport, I got to where I had some ideas of things that I would want to accomplish that really would mean a lot. Obviously, Daytona 500 was one, the championship was the other. A couple other track wins were important, Bristol and Atlanta, and a lot of the tracks that are historically prominent to me. You know, that was important for me to go, to kind of lock that down. I was, I didn't want to be sitting there after 18 tries or 19 tries like my dad and wonder whether I'd still be in competitive cars to even have a chance to keep going, keep trying. Luckily for him, he was still in competitive cars to be able to have more opportunities. Um, I was really lucky and fortunate to wrap it up early as I did. Yeah, and what did he say? What did he, do you remember anything from when he won that uh, race? No, I'd had a, I'd just raced my first race in the Bush Series and flipped upside down, had a concussion, and was sent home. And uh, I remember being in in the house, and uh, my thoughts were, I wish I'd have been there. You so know, you weren't even at the no, race. No, I, I was at home with a headache, but I wished I was. I'd wished I would have stayed. I probably could have stayed. I don't think I was sent home on purpose, but um, I wish I'd have stayed and uh, been able to be be there with him. Uh, like everybody else was, it was hard to deal. When I first met you, um, way back when you were racing Myrtle Beach, you're pretty much the same guy. That you know, you're obviously a little bit more outgoing now than you were back then, but you're pretty much the same guy. My father's been a big, big inspiration uh, to me uh, to stay, to stay the same, stay, to stay consistent. Um, I've uh, been around a sport a long time, so I've seen a lot of guys come in. I've seen how money changes people. I've seen how fame changes people. It's impossible to give a guy $10 million and not think he's going to be a little different, you know. Uh, you try to maintain the best you can as far as your personality and your attitude and how you treat people. Um, and, you know, I just I think my personality and my, uh, you know, my, my upbringing with my father, my relationship with my mom and my sister, uh, my friends, all those things contributed to, uh, to me being able to kind of keep it real up to this point. It's called the Super Bowl of racing, but for two-time Daytona 500 champ Michael Waltrip, this race has been nothing but a series of ups and downs. I've had some of the, the best times of my whole life at this place, and I've had some of the worst, and every one of them makes 
makes you